And today is March 19, 2019. I am Melissa Broccoli, and this is my grandmother. And I am Julia Broccoli, and this is my mother. Come with us to visit New York City. Let's get on the subway right here at Central Park, Grand Central Station. Now we could go uptown toward the Bronx, but I think today we're going to go all the way from Midtown, where we have Central Park, through downtown to the very tip of Manhattan Island. And off of Manhattan Island, at that very tip is Battery Park. From Battery Park, we could take a ferry over to Governor's Island. Governor's Island has quite a history. It used to be a place where they would hang pirates who had committed crimes at sea. Later, it became an immigration port for many people coming specifically, mostly, from Ireland and from Germany. There was a big edifice called Castle Gardens, and that was the immigration station. And later, that structure became a dance hall where the Swedish dancer and singer Jenny Lind performed. And she performed all across the country, financed by the irrepressible P.T. Barnum. When they replaced Castle Garden with another more permanent structure, they began to process immigrants over here on this larger island called Governor's Island. And we'll take the ferry back from Governor's Island, back to the Battery Park area, and we'll go down further to two smaller islands, one being Liberty Island, where we have the Statue of Liberty. And we can take a free ferry off the coast here, off to Staten Island, and then we can just turn around and come back again. All we really want to do is to get close to and see the Statue of Liberty. And remember when we did that and we could see there, her there with her torch welcoming the immigrants? It's so exciting because that same statue welcomed all of my relatives, all the people in my family, my mother's family, and my father's family. Near Staten Island is, as I said, the island of Liberty Island, and then there is Ellis Island. Ellis Island is so named because the person who owned that island was Mr. Ellis. And there was also a site where hangings took place in earlier times. But that changed. The original inspection station opened in 1892 on Ellis Island. And it was a wooden structure, and it was built of Georgia pine. Unfortunately, it burned to the ground. After it burned to the ground, the federal government, who had at this point taken over the administration of immigration from the state of New York, who governed it years before on Governor's Island, they built a new building with a steel frame and covered it with red brick. And by 1900, when that building opened, 80% of American immigrants passed through this port of New York through Ellis Island. In 1954, the government just gave up on the whole edifice on Ellis Island. They just let it go to ruin. And it wasn't until 1980 when our own Skyen of the automotive industry, Lee Iacocca, 
led a big campaign to restore the immigration building on Ellis Island and made it into an immigration museum. Now, Lee Iacocca was, of course, inspired to do so because his own forebears came in from Italy. It was not easy to come in to the United States. You had to go through a whole passage of doctors who would examine you to make sure that you had no skin conditions, and they had interpreters asking you about your background and which country you came from. And it was particularly hard for the Slavs, those who came from Slavic countries, and also for the Italians. Chinese were just out and out biased against. They couldn't come in. And when you came through, you also had to have your eyes examined. So they had doctors there checking your eyes. It was also a treacherous journey because most people did not have very much money and they weren't like in a cabin as if they were on a cruise ship. They were sitting or on the, on the deck itself or on assorted desk, deck, deck chairs. And they were getting very sick to their stomach because the, the waves were very strong. And speaking of waves, that makes me think of all of my relatives who came in and the genogram that I created based on their background. Using the standard symbols, they show above the name a little wavy line. And that is the standard for immigrants coming in over the waves. And if they have a little L next to their names, that means that they spoke their language and not English. Just kind of a curious thing. Now, Julie, there is the, the island of Sicily. Can you point out for us where the, my father's and mother's people came in? That's right, there's Messina, where my mother's father lived. And just above Messina is where my father's people came from, Calabria, which is near Albania and a very, very poverty-stricken mountainous area. And then toward the middle of Sicily, we have Palermo, which is the larger city. It has been my great privilege to visit the places of my grandparents and to visit my father in Sicily. It is really interesting when we think of all the generations who came in to our country and then had to make a new life, most of them without having the English language. And many people took advantage of them. Many people charged them much more money to stay in various boarding houses than they charged anyone else. And how were they supposed to know? They were new to the country. There were people who robbed them, and there were young women who were really sold into prostitution. So for many, many people, it was a very difficult time. But I am happy to tell you that over the six generations of the Bartolomeos, the Guarellas, Ma the Marchiomas, the Politos, and the Andinos, coming from people who did not ever finish elementary school. One generation, the second generation, everyone had a college degree. And among those college degree people are my cousins, one of whom is a medical doctor, another who, of whom is a marketing specialist another who is a pharmacist. And their children, one of whom is an orthopedic surgeon. The prejudice against immigrants, the fear that we have that they may be getting petulance or disease to our shores has never been true. And yet, the prejudice remains. And in fact, we are so grateful that Emma Lazarus, in 1849 to 1887, wrote this poem. You're me, you're tired, you're poor, you're huddled masses yearning to be free, the wretched refuse of your teeming store. Send these, the homeless, the temp tempest tossed to me. I left my lamp beside the golden door. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this brief visit with us to New York City.